Alright, so far we have already discussed how many properties of liquids. Tatlo na, no? Surface tension, viscosity, and your capillary action. Now we move to boiling point. So this is also a part of your properties of liquids. So boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid begins to boil. That's self-explanatory, no? It is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the external pressure. The normal boiling point of a liquid is the temperature at which it boils when the external pressure is 1 atmosphere. So, yung boiling point nangyayari siya, no? Kapag yung vapor pressure ng iyong liquid ay equal na dun sa external pressure. So, of course, the higher the intermolecular force of attraction in your molecule, the higher or the stronger the intermolecular forces, mas mataas yung ating boiling point. Bakit? You will need a greater amount of energy to break the forces between your molecules. Now we go to vapor pressure. Vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure of a liquid is the equilibrium pressure of a vapor above its liquid state in a closed container. A substance with a high vapor pressure, a thermal temperatures is often referred to as volatile. So, usually yung mga substances na ganito na sinasabi natin volatile, sila yung mga mabilis mag-escape. Madalas sila yung nangangamoy, no? Pag inopen natin sila sa laboratory. So, what do we mean by vapor pressure? So, if you're going to look at this um, this illustration, yung vapor pressure ng ating liquid is kapag equal na yung pressure ng liquid doon sa pressure na nasa taas niya. That is the vapor pressure of your liquid. So, vapor pressure, of course, it varies from one liquid to another depending on the strength of the intermolecular force. So, a liquid with strong intermolecular force will have a lower vapor pressure at a given temperature. So, opposite sila ni boiling point, no? Mas mataas yung IMF, mas mataas yung boiling point. Pero, mas mababa yung ating vapor pressure. Okay, now let's go to the molar heat of vaporization. Ayan, kapalan ko lang ng konti yung aking pen. So, molar heat of vaporization. So, it is also symbolized by delta H vape, no? This refers to the amount of heat or energy necessary to vaporize exactly one mole of a liquid. Ano ang unit niyan? Kilojoule per mole. So, the molar heat of vaporization is directly related to the strength of intermolecular forces that exist in the liquid. So, mas malakas yung ating IMF, mas mataas din yung value ng ating molar heat of vaporization. Keep that in mind. So, vapor pressure increases with increasing temperature. How do we calculate for that? We use the clausius clapeyron equation. What's the formula? Ln P1 over P2 is equal to the molar heat of vaporization over R, your gas constant, 1 over T2, temperature 2, minus 1 over T1. Okay. So, what are the important points to remember here? Dapat ko anong unit ni P1, yun din ang unit ni P2. Si molar heat of vaporization, ano ang kanyang unit? Binigay na natin kanina, kilojoule per mole. Si R, ano ang value ni R if it's a constant? It's a gas constant. Kapag joule, it's 8.314 Joule per mole Kelvin. But, kung kilojoule na value ang gagamitin natin, this is what? 8.314 times 10 raised to negative 3 kilojoule per mole Kelvin. Of course, yung ating temperature, it should always be expressed in Kelvin. So, let's try answering this one. So, benzene has a vapor pressure of 183 millimeter mercury. So, let that be our P1. P1 is 183 millimeter mercury at 40 degrees Celsius. 40 degrees Celsius. So, yung ating temperature 1 is 40 degrees Celsius. So, kindly bring out your calculators, no? Let's try computing that. How do you convert Celsius to Kelvin? You add 273, no? Either 273 or 273.15. Parehas lang yun. Napakaliit ng difference nila. So, in this case, we add 273. This is 313 Kelvin. Taking its heat of vaporization to be 30.8 kilojoule per mole. So, that is your molar heat of vaporization. 30.8 um, 
kilojoule per mole. Calculate its vapor pressure. So, ang hinahanap natin is P2. Kapag daw ang temperature natin ay 25 degrees Celsius. How do you convert that to Kelvin? Plus 273. That is equal to how much? 298 Kelvin. Ayan. So, what's the formula? Ln P1 over P2 is equal to um, delta H vape. Ayan. Molar heat of vaporization over your gas constant, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. You can also write it this way, no? LNP1 minus LNP2 is equal to molar heat of vaporization over R, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. There you go. So, let's substitute the values. Your LNP1 is LN183 millimeter mercury. Your LNP2, ito yung hinahanap natin, is equal to the molar heat of vaporization, 30.8 kilojoule per mole over, okay, litang ko to, no? so we have enough space to write the, the calculation, over R, so kilojoule to, dapat yung kilojoule din ang gamitin natin, times 10 raised to negative 3 kilojoule per mole Kelvin. Bakit po ito yung ginamit natin? Para mag-cancel yung ating units. Tapos 1 over T2, what's your T2? T2 is 200, 298 Kelvin minus 1 over 313 Kelvin. Ayan. So, napakadaming values, di ba? The technique here is to simplify muna. To simplify para lumiit yung ating solution. Cancel muna tayo ng units. This will cancel out. This one. This one and this one. Magka-cancel din. Then, kilojoule cancels kilojoule. So, ito muna. Ito muna ang values na tong i-input natin sa calculator. So, i-input muna natin yan sa calculator. That would be 30.8 over 8.314 times 10 raised to negative 3 times asterisk 1, ah, sorry, parenthesis, 298 minus 1 over 313. What's the value? The calculated value would be 0.596, no? This would be... This entire value right here is equal to 0.596. O, ibaba na lang natin lahat, no? So, LN183 millimeter mercury minus LNP2 is equal to 0.596. Ayan. Saan galing to? Ito, ito, ayan. Ito na siya. Simplify na rin natin yung LN183. So, LN183 is 5.209486. Mahaba yan. Round it up at least to 3 decimal places, no? So, this becomes 5.209 minus LNP2 is equal to 0.596. Okay, pagsamahin na natin yung mga like values. So, we transpose 5.209 to the other side of the equation. This becomes negative L LNP2 is equal to 0.596 minus 5.209. O, simplify muna natin ito. So, 0.596 minus 5.209. This, e this is equal to negative 4.613. Negative LNP2. Okay, wala dapat negative yung LN. So, multiply both sides by negative 1. So, negative times negative, this will become positive LNP2. And negative times negative, this will become positive 4.613. How do you cancel the LN? Raise it to E. So, cancel out, cancel out. P2 is now equal to E 4.613. So, madali lang, no? Input na lang natin to sa ating calculator. So, paano napipindot yung E sa calculator? Shift LN. Lagay ko dito, no? Shift, and then LN. Then, input 4.613. This is equal to, P2 is now equal to 100.79. Ano ang unit? Ano ba yung unit ni, millimeter, ni P1? The unit of P1 is millimeter mercury. So, si P2, this would be also millimeter mercury. So, if you round it off, this would be equal to 101 millimeter mercury. 
Alright, so napakadali lang ng ating sample calculation, no? So, I think, ayan, meron din pala dito sa ating PowerPoint. Now, don't worry, we'll be practicing more on the calculation side, no? We'll have a separate session for that. So, that ends part 3 of our lecture. Um, the next lecture would be on types and properties of solids.